Okay. <clears throat> so the question was posed on Facebook. I think it was the smoking den. I can't recall the name of the uh, person that posted, but their their question was they were looking for a um, a lightweight billiard pipe, and um, I I'm not sure. For some reason, I I thought I remembered. Um, and all these posts get jambled together, but I thought I remembered something about uh, expense and how much how much he was looking to spend it was a factor, but I could be wrong. And um, something something told me that he was newer to the hobby. Now, ten years ago, uh, because I skipped kind of that mid to lower range of pipes and went from boxed pipes, you know, store-bought pipes, not, not, didn't even get into Peterson, didn't even really get into that, but went from yellow bowls and, and, um, uh, you know, boy, it escapes me now, but some of those cheaper pipes that they'd sell at the grocery store on the rack as you're getting ready to check out, and half and half, and, uh, cherry blend and, and whatever, so a lot of things, a lot of, people kind of start into and it's one of the reasons that a lot of people stay out of the hobby because they think that's what it's like all the time because that's all they know but um, anyway I went straight from that to sue some to pipes like the one I'm going to show you here so this pipe you know a few, few years ago I would have said okay this is the one here and this is a uh, Northern Briars that's carved by Ian Walker in England and Ian uh, stays on a boat and um, that's that's I, I'm pretty sure that's Ian's and his wife's primary residence, but his workshop certainly on that boat, and he turns out some really really fine stuff. And a pipe like this, man, I bought this pipe seven six seven years ago, um, maybe more, but it's it's about a two hundred dollar pipe roughly two twenty five, and it's one of my favorite straight um, billiards Dublin you know billiard but one of my favorite straight pipes I don't smoke a lot of straight pipes but it's 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 probably my favorite straight pipe and, and ranks in my top um, top five top eight maybe out of 45 pipes and um, it's a great smoker but again it's 200 bucks so maybe that person didn't take that path of um, less or higher end everybody has a budget so you just have to pick your poison so when I thought about it you know that here's something that I skipped I skipped pipes like this um, you know way way back when because of the of the path that I took um, but knowing what I know now I wish I would have bought 10 of these for what I paid for this pipe but this is a barling it's not uh, it's a briar pipe um, it's got a, a really you know the, the grain's probably not super great in it so it's got a real aggressive blast on it uh, it's got some ring grain so it's not it's not um, the ugliest pipe that I've ever owned it may be the ugliest pipe that I have right now in my entire collection in my opinion um, but uh, it's a fantastic smoker and it was around 80 bucks and I bought it out of necessity um, we were on a trip. I took, went on a trip, and um, actually, I, I went on a, a couple day trip that wasn't planned, and it all happened at once. And I didn't have time to get back to get anything, pick anything up, so stopped at a pipe shop, and, and the only, the highest end pipe they sold, the highest thing they had, the nicest thing in the whole store was one of these, and uh, it was at the uh, Briar Patch in Canton, North Canton, Ohio, and. Um, I scooped it up and, and at that point in time they had these and virtually no tobacco I went into their back humidor they had three cans of uh, Presbyterian um, and uh, some junk some stuff well junk to me stuff that I wouldn't have in my collection um, something I wouldn't smoke and um, all dried out and whatever but those tins look pretty good in the corner so I scooped up to three tins and they had two or three a couple of these three left and I should have bought the whole rack but you know I thought I was too not too good for that, but I thought I'd evolved past that, and I didn't think I'd really like this. P figured it was just a small step up from a cheap box pipe you buy, like I said, um, as you're walking out the door at a supermarket. 
turns out I was wrong and I've kept it in my collection. You know, pipes like this, uh, they don't, pipes that you probably couldn't get 10, 15 bucks as an estate pipe on eBay, they don't really have a place in my um, collection because I don't, um, I don't have a space, truthfully. And I kind of like um, a little bit of a niche in pipe smoking, as you'll see in a moment. But great pipe, and I recommend it. I recommend it to anybody that can, if you can find them, buy everything they have. If you go to a pipe show and they have a brand new pipe like this for seventy, eighty, ninety dollars, scoop it up. It's a good investment. It's a good investment. You'll like it. it smokes real well. It's never let me down. It smokes good in the wind. Take it on the boat. That's why it kind of looks a little, a little. Um, it needs a. It needs. A, of wax on it and a little buff it was on the boat all summer long um so i used it because if you, something happens to it you're not you're not you know messing something up and you don't we have those spur of the moment boat trips where we'll just take off and go up there and it's nice to know it's up there and i don't have to forget something uh so i can do a little fishing i have a pipe out there anyway that's that so um brings us to the to the topic of the videos expert opinions and how much weight do you put into them and you know it's split right down the middle, and I'm I'm, I'm right in the middle. So my opinion is, is so vanilla and benign. I don't take a real side, but uh, I've got I've got a lot more good advice from old men that that smoke pipes for longer than I've been alive than I've gotten uh, than I've received bad advice, and I've received more bad advice on the internet than I've ever received good advice. And case in point is pipe tobacco reviews. You know, I've, I've bought, I've spent a lot of money on tin tobacco. And this is, this is prior to all the crazy stuff that went on a few years ago, w wiped them all out. But this is when you could buy any of that stuff for 10, 12, 13 bucks a tin, um, less than 20 for sure. And it was everything you wanted. There was hundreds and hundreds of types out there. But, you know, I'd buy something on a review. It's the worst stuff I've ever had. And it's something that comes to mind that I can't stand. A lot of people love it, but I can't stand it. It was Gaslight by um, GL Peace and the review you know they, they have a knack GL Peace for writing uh, really elaborate descriptions of their tobacco on the tin and then the reviewers the people that review this they they're not always thinking for themselves they're kind of because the, they're quoting the verbiage on the tin in their review so you can tell they're just they're just picking things off and, and trying to be uh, a little more educated, have a more educated palate than they really have. Um, and their reviews, their reviews maybe did something for somebody, but nothing for me. And, um, you know, I learned a lot from, from old, old men and, um, you know, probably from experience and they had good advice and they steered me in a lot of directions that I could have went really wrong really fast. And some of those moves could potentially have turned me off to the entire hobby. You know, thinking about thinking about uh, paying too much for something, or picking up a pipe based on somebody's name, and then only to find out there's this, this, and this, and um, learning from these guys that on a, on this this guy carves great pipes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but on Friday uh, he fights with his wife and carves terrible pipes. I mean, it was, some of those details were really funny, and and it steered me away, and I made a lot. I can't, I can't think of many bad choices I ever made listening to advice of uh, those old geezers. And um, they know who they are out there. Some some of them, you know, m most of them still around. So, um, and some not, which is sad. But anyways, that's that. That's how that's how um, much stock you can put in my opinion, you know, because I've, I've been all over the map, so I, I've missed a lot along the way. And that's a, a product... That I'm not I'm not regretful of at all. I, I like the pipes that I like, and I don't have a million different pipes. And I I've got enough that um, I've got a ton of variety. But there's certain pipes I like during certain um, weather conditions. Certain pipes that smoke better in the wind or better in the cold, and I can identify that because I don't have too many. But I've got enough that you know I can I can pick a different weight or a different shape or whatever I'm looking for. Um, whatever I'm in the mood for. I've got that kind of variety or I feel like I do. Enough for me anyway. And we can go around the we can go around the world on that. Everybody has their own opinion, but we'll start with um we'll start with uh 
my opinion on a couple of these pipes. These are niche pipes, but these are pipes I feel that they're they're um, carvers that are underrated, carvers that, um, in my opinion, are mistake free, but they don't have you know they're not advertising full page ads in in the magazines. You know what's left of them, and uh, they don't have a website where they're selling T-shirts and um, uh, uh, trinkets and you know bumper stickers and all that other stuff you know they got pipes on there maybe a few hats or something with their logo on it, and that's about it and uh, their concentrations on the pipes and it's more of a love and more of a passion for them than trying to make a living at it because we all know we all know that um, that things that you have to do you know it, that became a love at first sometimes becomes a chore and I think that's what some pipe makers that I've experienced in my time um, went through so you had to go look for early versions of those and um, but these these folks here that I've I've purchased more than one pipe from you know they've always been lights out and they make a they make a great I've never bought a I've never bought anything that I regretted from these folks and never met anybody that ever had anything they regretted and uh, one of them you know I was able to turn on to that old uh, that old geezer group that taught me a lot of things and um, steered me in the right direction. And you want to talk about somebody that's been smoking pipes for at that time 10, 12 years and had no, uh, had nothing near the collections that these these guys had. I mean, pounds and pounds and and crazy amounts of pipes and sellers. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about bookshelves packed with tins of tobacco. You can't you couldn't count them and go to those pipe shows and, and Bill would unpack, you know, he would, we would have to buy a longer vehicle. We would have to rent a longer vehicle every year to drive out there to the Chicago pipe show because he packed more and more shit in there. And it used to drive me insane because I thought, why does somebody need 50 tins of one tobacco? But by God, now I wish I would have, I would have, uh, I would have tried to mirror that a little bit. But he did t teach me a lot of things. That's why I'm in the position and some of the things I'm in now. And, and and uh, all those guys from that from that area down there in Pittsburgh were um, super instrumental in getting me steered in the right direction and probably saving me a ton of money and a ton of time. But anyway, we'll start with this this pipe. Um, this is uh, this is a really really good looking pipe. It's one of the it's one of the best looking pipes in my collection, um, and it's it's. Uh, the smoking quality for me is, I, I have to smoke this pipe a little different than um, my normal pattern because it doesn't take real well to that. And, uh, but that's okay, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, it's a little bit of a challenge and I like a challenge every once in a while. And it's still a really good smoker, you just have to treat it a little bit differently. And um, you know, make sure you got pipe cleaners on hand and all that jazz, but that's, that's a product of the way that I smoke, a little fast and a little hot. This is a Russ Cook, and uh, this is this is a Group Six ish. Uh, I wouldn't quite call it EXL, but pretty close, I guess, pretty close. And Russ, uh, the best of my knowledge and what I was told and what I, I guess I witnessed was a, uh, a customer of Russ's um, coming to a pipe show, and this was a this was a commission job, and you know we've all done it. I've done it. I've just been a little luckier where I've called a pipe maker and described a pipe to them and they make me exactly what I was looking for you know the the, the carving fits the uh, it's got a little a little bit of a bowl a quarter of a bowl left in it I've got to finish off here in a little bit but um, you know it's always been exactly like I envisioned but in this case that's that what well, this wasn't the case so the the customer came and looked at the pipe and he studied it. He was they, they were Russ's table was right across from ours, and that guy studied this pipe, and it was really one of the better looking pipes. Um, this size, Russ had a lot of nice pipes, but this size was one of the better looking, best pipes I thought he had. But you know, I, I don't buy Group Fours if I can help it, and Group Threes. But anyhow, um, the guy I wanted the pipe so bad, and Russ said he had it sold. And the guy shows up to the show, and it, I don't know if it was color, I don't know what it was. Russ didn't need to explain it because that guy didn't really like it as much as he thought, but I loved it. And I think Russ's deal with that certain customer was listen, if you're not in love with this thing, 
Um, I don't want you to have to buy it. That's the confidence he had in this product. And I was literally within within one minute of that guy leaving that table, sitting there uh, talking to Russ, and we struck a deal, and I, I bought this pipe. And it's a great purchase, but um, kind of a neat story. And Russ told me as I was walking away with it, he said, I better not see this on eBay. And I made him, I gave him my word that I wasn't buying it to resell it. And as you can tell, I, I smoked the tar out of it. And it was real light, it was real light, um, well, almost not really like a butterscotch, a little darker than that, and it darkened up real nice. But the light's shining right on it, so it looks a little a little brighter in my in my screen. But again, super nice pipe, good smoker, and um, that's a good job, Russ. Okay. This next pipe is um, actually we're gonna do the pipe I told I, I told you that I got to I was one of the first people to try this Carver's um, product in our group, and I'd read some good things. I, I saw some good things, and I thought, you know, if somebody were able to carve Prince shape, um, if they were able to carve an author. I guess is what I should say more than a prince, but I, I just always liked author pipes. I never, I never found one that I liked that uh, from a pipe maker that made them that um, I liked enough to buy. They're, they're not the cheapest shape. Sometimes they do use a lot of briar to get the angles and all that jazz. You gotta have a pretty big block to make one, uh, you know. And um, I never saw one I liked, but um, I was at the again, it was the Columbus Pipe Show. Um, the year before I bought the, uh, the, yeah, it was the year before I bought the pipe off Russ. So that must have been 2016, 2015. So this was 2015 or 2014. And, um, at the Columbus show and I walked past this pipe or no, 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 Chicago, my fault, Chicago show. I walked past this pipe and, uh, I, I was lucky enough that um, I made it there. Um, I was lucky enough that I made it there um, while the exhibitors were setting up. Because if they would open the show, this thing would have been gone. And I was 10 feet away from them when they were setting them out on the table, walking around. And uh, the minute it hit the table, it hit it with a sound. Um, the sound that turned my head around and there it was and I said I gotta have that so I bought it immediately right there at the show with the agreement that it got exhibited um, you know until the end of the show so this is a Scotty Pearsall uh, author this is a one big boy so as you can see I can't get my hand around that bowl um, EXL all day long and it is um, how do you describe it you can't describe it. It's um, it's just awesome, and a lot of love in this, and it just kind of showcased the work. And I wasn't, um, I wasn't um, finding anything else I liked, and I saw it. And I there was a few, you know, states or whatever that I'd see, and uh, man, I'd walk past them, and I really liked them. When I walked back past, they were gone, so I wasn't gonna let this one slip away, but. Um, I'm still to this day glad that I did it. I don't smoke it a ton. It is a big pipe, so you know you better be ready to spend some time when you're when you're going to uh, put a bowl through this. And the favorite, my favorite tobacco that I smoke in this is Three Nuns. The um, the discs fit real nice in there, and uh, leaves enough room around the edges that you can really get it going. So it smokes great. And it's a just you know taste exactly like it's supposed to taste it doesn't get too hot uh, or too cold where it gets kind of acidic and uh, smokes real real good in this pipe but I've had Montgomery through this pipe you know Virginia's only but uh, certainly three nuns fits it real well if you can get the you know the bells three nuns um, with the discs so love this pipe and and when I bought it it had to, it, as big as it was, and as much attention as it got at that show, it had to be a good smoker. If it was a, if it wasn't a good smoker, that was going to be a problem. So my my money was on the fact that Scotty th took the time and spent the money on the briar, and shaped this this stem, um, and made it fit so perfect. I mean, it's perfect. 
is perfect as you can as you can get as far as fit and finish I mean center of the bowl big old fat fuzzy pipe cleaner fly right through it and everything in it's just fantastic I, there's zero modifications the, the the mouth you know everything everything so all is all is uh, well with this piece but um, it had to be a good smoker if it wasn't man it was gonna be a big deal because it got a lot of attention so when I went outside and lit this up there were a lot of people walking around the table a lot of people asking questions and uh, it was good from the start it really was and I talked so highly about it that um, those guys that that taught me so many things they they bought a few off of her and had a couple commissions and they were just as happy as I was and I really felt like I accomplished something um, you know getting those getting that name out there I liked it so much that I had Scotty commission a pipe for me uh, the next year I don't have it here but it's a it's a smaller version of this but it's smooth I didn't have a lot of smooth pipes and I really wanted a smooth one and the grain is it's almost three-dimensional in that pipe and it's a fantastic smoker but it's too it's too nice to smoke it's um for me I'm, I'm bad about uh, setting things down and, and as you can see not getting the bowls knocked out as fast as I would like to after I'm done with them after they, they cooled down part of that's old habit because I don't want to scrape much of the cake out of there I want to let it get cold and then I uh, harden up a little bit and then I get on 10 other things and I don't get to it for a day or two but um, yeah the smooth one you know I'm scared to death to leave it sit somewhere or drop it or whatever just so nice and put a ding in that in that wood and and this one you better not drop it you're gonna hurt something so there's a reason you hang on to that but that's my door stopper author from Scotty Pearsall and then this is um, this is this is a pipe maker that uh, you know I consider a, a friend and um, we spend a lot of time you know smoking pipes and talking about life and having good conversations and having a glass of, of uh, whiskey or a beer outside and, and his his um, his wife is fantastic Wendy and um, just great people and, and a lot of that transferred into the way I smoke these pipes of his and his the you know his my top two are both his pipes I have um, another one that I smoke on a regular basis and the only reason it's not top two is because it's big uh, and it's really heavy and you have to you have to be in a, the right place at the right time so I don't smoke that one as much as I want to and then I have two that I have never smoked and um, it's a real cry and shame but uh, it's, it's not that I don't want to it's just I enjoy those other ones so much that I've always had this I've always thought that you know eventually if you buy enough um, if you buy enough things anything you're gonna hit a you're gonna hit a lick where it's not gonna be what you thought and I, I just want to keep that I, I have no reason to believe that either one of those non smoked ones are gonna be like that but I, I want to um, I enjoy the other ones so much that just pretty much can't get any better and I, I just worry that they're not gonna be as good but here's one of them right here this is a this is a Thomas James and this is an unsmoked pipe and um, you know this this was um, this was um, made for me by Tom he had one at a show that I just fell in love with I thought it was the nicest pipe in the world and just like most of Tom's things if, if you to know him and to own one of his pipes is to be a huge fan in my opinion to have a Thomas James it's, it's probably your favorite pipe it certainly is mine and so many other people that I know um, and they they convinced me to go buy the, the pipe off Tom and I remember you know going over to his house and giving him a call and then meeting him at his house and um, I'd never spent that kind of money on a pipe when I met Tom but I just I wanted to be in the big boy club and uh, it wasn't like it it wasn't like it was a like I had to go take a loan out or anything like that I mean it was reasonably priced but for me, I was in the in the hundred and fifty to two hundred and twenty five dollar pipe club, and Tom didn't play in that league, and he shouldn't be playing in that league. So, to shell out, you know, to shell out a, a big chunk of change was nerve wracking. I remember getting back to my house that night and firing it up, and uh, it, it was di it was totally different than anything else I had. And, 
the engineering was totally totally spot on and it was everything was perfect and there was no weird uh, pits in it or anything like that I mean and the, and the blast on it was different it felt different in your hand and it had a balance to it and um, I realized that was a big league deal so kind of funny but anyway this is um, this is a, a copy of one that like I said Tom had at a show and I kind of you know really wanted it for my collection and it wasn't uh, it wasn't a very good show that year and every, all the pipe carvers were, um, you know, they were kind of a little worried. And there was a lot of buzz, you know, the industry was going in a downhill spiral. And this is before, you know, this is when everything was running at top speed. There was no talk about, um, there was no talk about uh, shutdowns or, you know, the, the Great Recession had passed and everybody had, you know, some money. And they were spending some money and nobody could figure it out. And then for whatever reason, the last two and a half, three hours of the show, people just went gangbusters and stuff disappeared. Stuff you looked at for two, three days disappeared. Um, and it wasn't, the pipe makers weren't super happy because they were cutting deals, you know, just to try to move stuff. Like we all, like, you know, you would expect. And that year, everybody just wanted to go last minute. There was getting to be enough to go around. And a lot of those older guys weren't able to make it to the show and it was really slowing down. And, um, you know, prices were expensive, and a lot of those guys are not going to pay three, four hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars for a pipe. And uh, some of the some of the fantastic pipe makers hit the ground, and the problem was a group of great pipe makers, fantastic genius, whatever you want to call them, uh, pipe makers hit the scene at the same time. You had the the what's his name, Grant Batson, I think, something like that, and Tom and uh, Russ Cook and and Scotty Pearsall and, and um, that Huber kid, I think he's from Pittsburgh. Man, I, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the the uh, the majority of them out. I can't even remember. But you couldn't walk up and down those pit tables. You couldn't find an eighty, ninety dollar pipe. You were buying a corn cob, or you were spending two hundred bucks. And that drove a lot of people. Um, made a lot of people stay home. And not spend the money. Some of those guys, I remember, them, they were shocked. They, they they go to one show every five years, and the show they went to before was totally different, packed to the gills, because it had instead of instead of twenty tables of thousand dollar pipes, it had two hundred dollar. Uh, it had two hundred tables of twenty five dollar pipes or whatever you want to call it, and um, yeah, they were they were shocked. They were shocked. So. Anyhow, um, I like this pipe so much. Tom knew that, that I really wanted it, but uh, the guy came over to, to buy it, and I think he bought the whole collection, and he, it was the same, same story. You know, he was really, really dug this pipe itself, and I have another one, uh, Big Horn, that, that uh, is its twin. And um, Tom says, you know, I'll make you, I'll make you one. I'll make you another one. And, and I think this one's nicer than the one he made uh, at the show, in my opinion. But I've never, never struck it. I don't know if I ever will, and it's a crying shame because I should, I should spark it up. I'm sure it's perfect. You can't, uh, you can't find any flaws in it. You can't find any flaws in the engineering. But um, yeah, the other ones are top ten or top. They're, they're number one. They're ten stars, and um, you can't go anywhere but down. So I, pr I probably pick it apart. Who knows? And deny myself. Uh, chance to enjoy a really good pipe so that's that and that's just opinionated um, kind of fringe pipe makers they don't have full page ads in magazines they don't set up elaborate tables with crazy lights flashing and um, you know special tablecloths and all that junk I mean they're they're grabbing it they're grabbing a table at these shows and they're using the white tablecloth that's included and they're setting their stuff up on a quick little stand because they travel light and um, they get a pocket full of cash so that's that and uh, we'll talk about some tobaccos here all right three different three different tobaccos and um, quick story about each of them but I, I'm gonna spark this thing up here I've been waiting too long I got a story this is a nice pipe too uh, one of my favorites but um, again one of the one of those pipes that I bought and uh, 
never enjoyed anything lower. It was it was just in the two hundred dollar class and um, went straight to it. So awesome for the money. One of my favorites. Just a just a great uh, just a great looking pipe, and again, it's one of those ones that I don't take care of it as good as I should because I, I use it a ton, and um, it's because it smokes great. It smokes great, and it's kind of that right size. It's one of my smallest pipes for sure, but. Um, you know the bowl's not huge, but it's got it's got some weight to it, so you're not gonna you're not gonna throw it in your pocket and forget it's in there. That's for sure. Totally the way I smoke it to cause all the relights. It doesn't have anything to do with the pipe itself. The pipe itself smokes great, but the way I smoke it, I relight a lot, and um, you know that's why the tops get a little bit a little singed sometimes but it's a Randy Wiley and this is the um, patina series that he does I think it's about middle middle of the road of his series he has a couple of series but uh, I, I bought it at Allegheny Smokeworks there in, in Blonox Pennsylvania and they sold a lot of uh, Wiley stuff um, some of the some of the stuff he did you know this this has got some style to it some character to it and I'm not that's that's not me so I'm, I'm kind of more of a, of a traditional shape and um, I don't have a whole lot of, of freehand stuff but um, you know there's nothing I don't like about this pipe and none of the other stuff that they had that he had there of, of Randy's fit you know it was all a little wilder it was all a little um, a little more freehand, a little more, you know, he's got this tough to see. But as you can see here, the little burl on that, but um, there's a name for that. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. But anyway, he had a lot of that all over the pipe and up here on the, on the tops and all that stuff. So, you know, not, not really for me, but this one had just enough. So, Again, I'm sure they were all great smokers, and I, uh, looking back, I probably should have bought all of them and learned to like them, or at least kept them in my collection for an investment because they've only probably went up and smoked. But uh, anyway, I'm glad I have this one, and I have uh, Montgomery in it. So we'll talk about this Montgomery. Um, Man, lighting's terrible. This GL piece, it's um, it's a Virginia blend. For those of you that doesn't, that you don't mind hearing a little reading. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this for everybody else. Fast forward for a second, but I'll read the back of the tin. It's super, um, it's super colorful. There's a lot of uh, a lot of verbiage in it. Virginia's, Virginia's, Virginia's. Several grades of wonderful flu-cured leaf from soft yellow to deep red are combined with just a touch of dark-fired Kentucky for a little added richness. I don't think you, I can't taste the, the dark-fired in this blend. Um, it adds to it, but it's just a, it's just a, um, it's just a condiment. It's very light. A special process recovered from ancient archives provides the finishing touch to this wonderful blend. A naturally sweet and processing subtle complexity Montgomery presents delightful new dimensions for the lover of sophisticated Virginia blends. It's got a lot going on. I dig it. Um, if you have it in a tin and you don't like it, um, call me and let me know what you want for it. We'll see if we can work something out. I've got a ton of stuff to trade, but I'll, I'll, I've got um, a bunch of half pound and, and one pound bags of this, so there's a reason why I kind of hoard it. Um, the second is, um, we'll talk about some McCraney's. This is Red Flake. 
I think it, the red ribbon is a little more popular um, for a lot of people for some reason. It seemed like it, it always sold out 10 times faster than the red flake did, um, 10 to 1. They were sell there um, five, six years ago. And uh, i got to tamp this down. But McCraney's uh, is a small operation, um, family-owned operation, and they they manufactured tobacco for a long time, and they did a real good job of it. But it was a niche market; they didn't sell they didn't sell much out of their market. I never saw it around. And then uh, you know, hooked up with those guys from Pennsylvania. And they were in love with it, and um, I quickly learned that what they, what they liked, I loved it. So I just got lucky, fall into a group of people that kind of had the same taste and liked the same type of tobacco. Not not the same pipes at first. They really made fun of my small, the, you know, it's an ego thing. Maybe it maybe it's the reason that, that forty year olds go out and buy Corvettes. I don't know midlife crisis, but they have big pipes, and um, bigger bigger. Is bigger, bigger than my um, Scotty Pearsall. So, some of these group fours and, and fives they, they took umbrance with. But I kind of started, I, I went over to the other side, but I find myself going right back and forth. I smoke an equal amount of great big ones as these, these you know, fours and fives. So, I don't have the love for it they have, but uh, the niche for the big pipes they have, but I sure do like them. So, the Red Flake you know they they were buying it by the case when I met them I mean literally um, was it 48 cans or I don't even know but I've never bought a case but they were buying it by the case case and a half and splitting it two three ways that was it and they got me um, you know I just kind of fell into the to the it was a big deal people people at shows and stuff talked about it a lot how this club in Pennsylvania is buying tobacco from these guys by the case. And um, smart, smart moves. Even though I don't think any of us knew what was going to happen or how quickly it happened, it came as a surprise to a lot of people. They knew that it was eventually going to happen. And that was the reason for the stockpile. Either that or they, uh, maybe I'm giving them too much credit which is unlikely, but maybe they just expected someday the market was going to re-explode and they were going to blow out everything, but I'm, I'm positive that wasn't, that wasn't their motivation. I think they knew that um, things were going to happen to regulate the, the sale of it. They saw it. They saw it go from what happened in their youth to what it was now, and it was probably a, a huge leap. And they knew that it was due for a spike. So anyway, they buy this red flake and red ribbon by the case. And the red flake was a couple bucks cheaper. It's the same stuff. It's just cut different. It's just, um, it's just, it's exactly the same tobacco. But when they cut it, they, um, when they get it out of the press and, and cut it instead of instead of tumbling it and busting it all loose, you know, they slice it up into the flake. And um, that's that. I think that I think the back of the uh, both the cans are exactly. They have exactly the same um, uh, verbiage on their descriptions of the tobacco. It's just special allotment of the 2008 crop. North Carolina leaf has been secured for our discriminating pipe smokers. Um, the softest, most enjoyable straight red Virginia we've ever smoked with the light vacuum sealed tobacco will continue to mellow with age. They bought it, stocked it up. These, these, I've got, you know, I, I thought I was a big shot buying 10 cans at a time and I probably got 30 cans of this stuff and the newest stuff is from 2012 and I don't smoke it that much. Um, I'm scared to smoke it because I get to liking it and blow through those tins and um, I don't ever want to have the last tin of it. I, 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 I would um, I feel really bad about it. You're not getting it anymore, that's for sure. It's big money. I've been offered um, 45 to 50 bucks a tin for it. Uh, by 20 of them at a time but not gonna do it I like it too much not hurting anything in the box in my basement I mean you'd really have to you'd really have to want some for me to sell it 
um, or you'd really have actually actually I wouldn't even sell I don't even want to sell it you'd have to have you'd have to have something better that I would trade for better to me and there's not a whole lot out there it exists but there's not a whole lot um, I probably wouldn't take Montgomery for it but I'd probably take an old three nuns or something like that I mean it have to be I'd even pay a little boot but it have to be something that really got me excited and then this one will be the last one that we talk about. And, it, and again, something you can't get due to unforeseen circumstances. But I remember this is probably the first high dollar McClellan tobacco that I bought. I had no clue what it, what it was all about. I had no clue how it was going to smoke. Um, didn't have, didn't have um, a lot of access to magazines. And when I did, it was... Um, it was back issue or something that, that somebody had in a smoke shop sitting on the counter because every time I'd get to the to the I, I didn't have any smoking lounges close to me and every time I, by the time I'd get to the big city and go in one of these smoke shops they were sold out except for what they had to, to read in the in the lounge and you'd skip several months so I never never got to see reviews on this and then once again like I said internet tobacco reviews never did anything but let me down so um, I'm really glad that I did because I might have passed on this because some people don't like it but this is called Balkan Blue and um, it's a McClellan blend and uh, it's got Latakia and, and you know those Balkan tobaccos in it that you can't get anymore the, the Cyprians and all that jazz so um, yeah it's 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 I remember I remember the first time I smoked it and it was um, totally different than anything I ever had it was because of the Balkans I was, I was a Latakia guy at that point in Virginia Virginia was in there too but a lot of Latakia stuff and um, that's why I bought it because of the Latakia I had no idea what the Balkan part of it was and, and when it hit me it kind of it was kind of weird at first and I wasn't quite sure I liked it and then by the time I was halfway through the can, I really liked it. And by the time I got to the bottom of the can, I was pissed that I didn't have anything left and, and had to go find it. And it was tough to find because they, they were shipping it and it was selling as fast as you could get it. And now that stuff, I see it advertised on the internet for $100 a tin. I should have bought 20 tins of it at a time. I've done that with tobaccos that I've liked. I went to pipe shows and one of being one of those people that wipe out the entire table at the time there was no shame in it because um, you didn't feel bad for anybody else because uh, the, the tobacco maker that was selling it you were standing there talking to them and talking to their wives and talking to their kids and their helpers and stuff and if they ran out of something all you had to do was give them your name and address and um, They'd give you their name and address, and you'd shoot them a money order when you got home, and they'd send you ten cans of it. So you didn't you didn't feel bad, but I was greedy about it because I didn't live close to anywhere I could go run and get it. I didn't want to run out. And then when all this, you know, years later, after I'd I'd let cans uh, dry out and screwed up and didn't have them humidified, and realize all this and this hits, and and now you're now you're. Um, now you're glad for everything you have. It's almost, it's almost, it's definitely not exciting. I can tell you that for me, it's not exciting to crack open a new tin. It's one, I'm one step closer to running out. And that's, um, that doesn't make me happy. I probably got enough to last if I smoked the way I smoke, a couple bowls a week. Not that much, not even that, maybe, maybe five bowls a month, and uh, which isn't enough. But um, yeah, keep that up. I probably got enough to last me. A long time but I never want to run out and I've only got so many of each kind that I really really like and it's a finite number and you're not finding it I, I'm not paying what people are asking for it I'm spoiled off uh, off everything else so hey that's that um, thanks for tuning in super long-winded one of those videos you could watch and, and put you to sleep but I'm, I've been out of the game a long long time I'm super super rusty but I'll get this up as soon as I can um, it's early January here, and uh, we're not here everywhere, but early January, um, 10 o'clock in the evening here in, the, in, in Ohio, and um, hopefully we'll get another video up here real soon. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button, 
and uh, get some more up. Thanks.